Last night, two police officers were shot, one in the face and the other in the shoulder, while they were standing in front of the police station as demonstrators gathered across the street. Let's set the scene. Angry from the start, and their target was obvious. Those words eventually gave way to violence. And a final despicable taunt. Acknowledgement nine months ago would have kept that from happening. Attorney General Eric Holder weighed in earlier today condemning the shooting. I unequivocally condemn these repugnant attacks. And I stand ready to offer the full investigative resources of the United States Department of Justice, the FBI, uh, to solve this crime and to hold these perpetrators um, fully, fully accountable. What happened last night was a pure uh, ambush. Uh, this was not someone trying to bring healing to Ferguson. Uh, this, was, this was a damn punk. Punk. Last night might have been the result of just one punk. But it's hard to deny there is a lot of anti-police sentiment swirling in this country right now. Can you imagine the aftermath of all of this? Now it seems like it's even a worse situation. Violence on all sides. Emotions running high. Where do we go from here? Um, I, I, I will disagree with the anti-cop sentiment swirling around the country. I think it's swirling among a select few of really awful, awful people. The problem is, it's the rest of the country that isn't saying anything. Where is the silent majority of the people that love law enforcement, that respect law enforcement? It's time for them to speak up and march for these people that are now bullseyes. They're, not, they're, they're men in blue who are now bullseyes. We watched an entire nation of law enforcement get smeared over Ferguson. They took something local, and they made it national. They said it was an epidemic of police shooting blacks. This was wrong. So I'm not going to indict the White House or the administration, I'm not going to do what they do, but we should, we should indict the salivating, race-crazed media who ginned up this and spread the virus of division that allowed an atmosphere for this to happen. What has progressed in this last decade? We've seen three major things undermined. We've seen the national spirit, i.e. patriotism, which is mocked. We've seen the family unit fall apart because we are now endorsing all kinds of life, lifestyles and we don't care whether they're single parents or, or what, law enforcement is now seen as a threat. So the triumph of subversion spread from campus to communities, whereas right now what you see is the fruits of subversion. Th th these are not people interested, the, the guy that shot the cops, he's not interested in reconciliation. Holder's right. This is about subversion, about, about undermining society, undermining civilization. They show up at protests like this for a reason because it's their way in. All right, Dana, so Ferguson on edge, did the Attorney General hit the right tone? Sounded like it to me. Um, I do th think that when the Justice Department issued its report and they knew that this was coming, because they were involved, <clears throat> I don't know what sort of help maybe the Ferguson police needed then, or if they needed more monitoring or support. <clears throat> I don't know if they asked for it, but it seems like that would have been something that they should have offered. Um, I was thinking, thinking about these, the, the community and how... It is a difficult deci decision to choose law enforcement as your career path. Um, but the people that do that, they do it because they want to help their local community. You usually become a law enforcement officer in a place where you grew up because that's your home and that's what you want to give back to. Um, and it's very satisfying work and can be a rewarding career, but it's also very dangerous. And I don't know what the recruitment's going to be like in the future for a place like Ferguson. And I'm not exactly sure, and I'm looking forward to the discussion, in, in fact, Juan's comments, about what breaks the cycle. Mm -hmm. um, because at this point, the community seems, I don't know if this is a, a point where they can now step back right. and everybody cool, have cooler heads prevail, or if it gets worse. I hope not worse. So Still here, yes, but racism exists. Um, blacks are treated poorly uh, in relation to whites in, in, in police departments, by police departments around the country. That's not the tone that's going to fix things. What kind of tone do we need to hear, and especially from the black community? 
Well, I think you need to be very clear here that this is wrong. I don't think there's, I mean, it's, it's not hard to say this is wrong. You do not shoot anybody, but certainly not officers of the law who protect your community. And I got to tell you, in the minority community, we're more dependent on the police maybe than in affluent, wealthy communities with their alarms and guards and private security. So anyway, I'm just telling you, that's crazy. But the problem I think that exists is one of building trust. And how do you build trust, especially with poor black communities where they often see the police as coming in, stereotyping them and all the rest. Mm -hmm. This, you know, Eric says it was wrong what happened and it was proven to be untrue in terms of the hands up and uh, don't, you know, shoot. don't shoot and all that. And he's right. But the other half of that report was a community that felt that the police department was unfairly targeting them and aggressive in the way that they handled and directed that aggression towards people of color, and especially poor people of color. So that exists, too. I will say this. I hope, you know, because I believe that those reforms necessary to build the trust are being pursued by officials in Missouri. I mean, you saw the, the, the police chief had resigned. The, 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 you know, people in St. Louis, they're thinking about taking over that police department. All of law enforcement is trying to find these folks. But, you know, it seems to me there are good people in St. Louis of all colors who are working on this issue. Then you have these folks come in, and they undermine... I think they play to right. all of our antagonisms and fears and racial hatreds, and that's, I mean, it's just destructive. Yep, yep. Well, the, the, the comments, too. I mean, yeah, yes, the, the shootings were awful. It was horrible. But the comments before and after the shooting, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're still, it's still it's very there. destructive. It's still, it's yeah. still present there. Well, how do you think po police officers feel when they get up every morning, they kiss their wife, their child goodbye mm -hmm. to try and go out there and make a good living, not, you know, don't get paid very much. Cops' lives matter, too. Black lives matter. White lives matter. All lives matter. Law enforcement officials are understandably furious about the shooting. So listen to St. Louis County Police Chief John Belmar and Ferguson Police Rep Jeff Ruda. This is really an ambush is what it is. I mean, you know, you, you can't see it coming. You don't understand that it's going to happen. And you're basically defenseless from the fact that it is happening to you at the time. I kept hearing yesterday, oh, the protesters finally got what they wanted. Chief Jackson stepped down. They didn't get what they wanted earlier yesterday when Tom stepped down. They got it late last night when they successfully, finally successfully shot two police officers. Is that what it takes? Is it payback, an eye for an eye? Well, I mentioned this uh, a couple of times before. I, we talk about backlash a lot when we talk when there's a uh, an act of terror done by uh, radical Islamists. Uh, we we are told, you know. You know, don't go after modern Muslims. You know, we got to. You know, mosques are being threatened. Whenever there's a, an isolated incident involving law enforcement, you don't hear people saying like, "Hey, you guys, lay out the cops. Don't go after the cops." No one really seems concerned about the backlash against cops. Uh, instead, they create an environment where it's almost the opposite. There is a solution for Ferguson, and it is to resign. I'll let all the cops go. Let the activists police this neighborhood. In a week, uh, they'll make Aleppo look like Epcot Center. I mean, it's not. It, it, if, if they actually believe that the cops are a negative influence, then the cops have every reason to say, see you later, we're out of here, good luck. Well, you're right. You know what? I mean, so, is that what it would take? Yeah, it, it would be, be anarchy. It would be totally and that's anarchy. what the anarchists want. But you know what? Guess what? Higher levels of violence and crime, right? You always hear the conservatives, and this is just the truth. Higher levels of violent crime in the black community, higher levels of robbery, all this. Right. So what you're saying, you yeah. know, it's self-evident. Without police, you do not have structure. You right. don't have protection even to walk to school. Exactly. And little old ladies with the bars over the windows and the gates over the doors, right. yeah. they would pay a terrible yeah. price. Exactly. But that's not to say that a bad cop is to be excused. Right. So, so w what will be very telling is when they find this guy, mm -hmm. four guys, whoever it is, three or four shots fired, right. whoever it is, they think it was one. Wait, who is he? is he? Is he someone from the community? Is he a protester that was shipped in? Is he an anarchist that came from some other group that wants to make a stand and wants to keep the, keep the, the race the, the debate going, the flame going? This, it's going to be very, very telling. Mm -hmm. If it's someone from the... I, I just... I don't know. It's just a gut feeling. It's not someone from the Ferguson community just yeah. didn't seem like they they seem they look they protested they they broke some windows they lit some stuff on fire but to shoot cops is wrong that was one thing oh no I it's thought. wrong but it but doesn't seem just like, like it, the it guy that traveled to New York to shoot the cops guy just the, the only thing I would quibble with in the attorney general's comments today is when he said that the perpetrator was a punk Mm -hmm. like, a punk is somebody who does graffiti or something this this individual shot people cold-blooded murder this is a yeah. violent crime
Yeah, you're absolutely right. That, that was an unfortunate uh, term used. But let's talk about this. This is important. Yeah. National Urban League President Mark Morial had some interesting commentary on what the shootings meant, and he says they show that change is still needed. There's a report that I saw that stated that the shots did not come from the protesters, right. and only an investigation or an inquiry is going to tell the truth about what happened. Having said that, it demonstrates that there's still tremendous need, demand for change in Ferguson, that people want further change, uh, and that the resignation of the chief and uh, the city manager are just steps yeah. towards that type of change that needs to take place. His comments suggest that this kind of a violence and attempted murder is warranted and in fact necessary as part of the dialogue. In, in uh, whatever, 25 minutes, a second soundbite, Mark Morrell found two excuses that he planted for, for, for the, uh, the yeah. occurrence last night. Number one, that the shot may not have come from the protesters. Really? Because there are eyewitnesses that saw it. There are eyewitnesses on both sides, both cops and non-cops, who saw where the, where the shots were fired. They were definitely fired from the protesters' side into where the cops were standing. Number two, he said, well, change is needed. So almost like, well, that's why that happened. So in, in 25 or 30 seconds, two excuses were made. Like I said in, the, in my prior comment, Mark Moriel, a leader in the, in, in the black community, Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, stop making excuses. Start pointing the finger to the thugs and the punks that they are and say enough. Cut it out. This is not helping the cause at all. Because if not, guess what? Hands up because they've got blood on their hands. If you are not part of being the solution and if you are uh, promoting a false narrative, it's not only irresponsible, it's deadly. Look what's happened in the police communities. But it's not a false narrative to say that there are tensions between poor black people in this country and the police. That's but a it fact. is a false narrative to suggest that something that did not happen, such as no, no, hands up, don't shoot, no, you're, you're and talking cops specifically. are going out there specifically to murder African Americans, that is not true. No, you're talking specifically about uh, the Michael Brown situation, and even in New York with the Eric Garner situation where the guy was choked, I think grand juries have both spoken very clearly on these issues, but it's not to say that there's not this larger issue about tensions between how the poor black community in this country feels about the police. Right, and your comments were specific with respect to establishing a relationship of trust. Yes, and you have to deal. That's if they're why not I'm helping it. They are undermining the trust, and they are putting uh, minority neighborhoods in grave risk but, for this kind of behavior. But what I'm saying is you need to understand... You know, I just I disagree with you. I don't think that Mark Morial was sent making an excuse. I think he's saying that there is a continuing angst, anger, in that black community, and that people are looking for change. That's part of the building trust that I'm talking about. But, but to, to, to mention these two things, that that shot may not have come, or the we questions where it came from. Right, to mention that and also to say that the community needs change or the, the country needs change, just in the, mentioning in the same breath of a shooting, two cops shot, certainly, certainly ties that, ties, ties those two together I, in, in many people's worlds, including mine. Okay, great. Well, the joke is on everybody, on anybody who has a sincere feeling about this, whether you believe uh, that the police, the police acted wrongly or you believe in, in, in defending the police, we're all 